Hello students. Welcome to the biology class. Today we will study about the structure of cell. If we observe different kinds of cells, whether they are animal cells or plant cells, whether they belong to unicellular organisms or multicellular organisms, we observe a general pattern in the structure of all these cells. A typical cell is made up of three parts. First, plasma membrane which is also called a cell membrane, second cytoplasm and third the nucleus. First plasma membrane and the cell wall. Plasma membrane it is the outermost layer of cell in animal cells which is living and flexible. It is made up of phospholipid bilayer and proteins. Its functions are first it allows passage of solvents and some selected solutes. Therefore, it is selectively permeable. Second, since it is flexible, it enables the cell to engulf food and other materials from to enter from external environment through the process called endocytosis. This is how the unicellular amoeba takes in its food from its external environment. Being the outermost layer of animal cells, it provides a definite shape to the cell. Next, the cell wall. It is present outside the cell membrane, in the plant only in the plant cell, fungi, and bacteria. It is non-living and provides structural strength and shape to all these cells. It is made of cellulose and is permeable, that is, readily allows passage of solutes and solvents through it. This is the structure of plasma membrane. As we have already discussed, the plasma membrane consists of phospholipid bilayer. This is a single molecule of phospholipid and you can see that there are two layers of phospholipid. This is the first layer and this is the second layer. Every single molecule of phospholipid consists of two parts. One is called as the head which is hydrophilic in nature. This head, this head is towards the interior of the cell as well as the exterior of the cell. Whereas the other part of the phospholipid molecule that is the tail is hydrophobic in nature and that is why it is always present away from the interior of the cell as well as the exterior of the cell. Along with the phospholipid molecules there are certain proteins which are present in the cell membrane. Of, there are few proteins molecules which are present inside the plasma membrane. These are called as intrinsic proteins and they help in the transfer of particles uh, from the, uh, through the plasma membrane. Whereas the extrinsic proteins are present on the surface of the plasma membrane. Next, the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm consists of cell organelles and cell inclusions. First of all, what is a cytoplasm? It is a jelly-like fluid present between the cell membrane and the nucleus. It suspends various cell organelles and cell inclusions in it. Cytoplasm along with cell membrane and nucleus is referred to as protoplasm. This is the structure of a complete cell. Here you can see the cell membrane surrounding the complete cell. At the center of the cell is present the nucleus. Now this light colored portion of the cell, this is filled up with a fluid which is called as cytoplasm. Now this cytoplasm consists of various cell organelles and cell inclusions. Now what are these cell organelles and cell inclusions? The cell organelles are living structures which are always membrane bound whereas cell inclusions are non-living substances that do not have any membrane around them. These cell organelles, they act as mini organs inside the cell which perform specific functions whereas the cell inclusions act as support system for the functioning of the mini organs that is 
these cell inclusions help the cell organelles to perform their functions. These cell organelles are nucleus, mitochondria, plastids, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, lysosomes, etc. Whereas cell inclusions include stored nutrients, secretory products, pigment granules, fat globules, etc. Now the first cell organelle that we are going to discuss is the nucleus. First of all, the structure of the nucleus. It is a double membrane structure which is similar to cell membrane but differs from it since it has pores in between to allow the transfer of molecules in and outside. The outer membrane of the nucleus continues as endoplasmic reticulum. Nucleus is filled with jelly-like substance called nucleoplasm and contains one or more nuclei. It contains thread-like structures known as chromatin which condenses to rod-shaped structures called as chromosomes only at the time of cell division. The chromosomes consist of DNA that is deoxyribonucleic acid and proteins. Chromosomes store information for inheritance in the form of DNA. Functional unit of DNA is known as genes which carry the information necessary for constructing and organizing the cell. Now, the functions of nucleus. It helps in reproduction and is responsible for transfer of genes from one generation to the next. Secondly, it controls the activities of other cell organelles and thus determines the way the cell develops and what form it will take at maturity. This is the structure of nucleus. As you can see, this is the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. This nuclear membrane consists of various pores. These are the pores that you can see. Now the inside of the nucleus is filled up with again a jelly-like structure which is called as the nucleoplasm. Here in this nucleus you can see only one nucleolus. And these thread-like structures that you can see, these are the chromatin material or simply chromatin. These chromatin are the ones which are going to condense into chromosomes just before the cell division. As you can see over here, this nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope, they, uh, it is double layered and the outer layer is continued into the endoplasmic reticulum. This is the endoplasmic reticulum which we are going to talk about in the coming slides. This is the endoplasmic reticulum. These are tubular structures okay, and which are in continuation with the outer membrane of the nucleus. So this is the complete structure of nucleus. Now this is the time to recall or recapitulate about what we have studied today. Here is an assignment which you can write in your registers. Have a good day.